they mentioning things being found. Well, well, where are they? What happened to them? Uh, and they're all they're always like a little aside. Oh yeah, we found this. And then oh, okay, I'd like to see more details of that. And then you start trying to find it, and you find it's incredibly difficult. Right, hello, welcome back to the next instalment of Sutton Who, The Real Story. And as you can see, it's already started to look very different to uh, what, what it's currently presented as, shall we say. And looked at all sorts of various things about the artefacts. And what surprises, uh, well, surprised me, and you might not be aware of, is how many different mounds have been uh, excavated and the different information, and they don't necessarily match up, uh, particularly when we're looking at things like timelines. And uh, so... Uh, Bob's been doing more work on this, so can you tell us a bit more about this then, uh, Bob? Yeah, yeah, the, 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 there's been a whole series of excavations starting in 1938 with Basel, 1939, then, then you go up into the into the 60s, and then there's been more recent excavations uh, yeah, more recently, uh, and um, uh, uh, a lot of them done in the 1980s under Martin Carver. Um, and what, what he's done is produced, um, and I think it's about 792 page book, detailed in uh, the whole of this cemetery um, and outlining all of the mounds, what they found in each of the mounds, and then, then come in drawing conclusions to, as to what, what was going on and, and, and the timeline for how it happened. Now, according to his book and, and his timelines, um, if, if we look at this plan on here, everything that is red, coloured red, all these mounds here have, have been excavated and, and, um, and remains have been found, either, um, either cremations or actual bodies in boats or whatever. Um, all of the ones in red, he ascribes to the period 590 to 630 AD, which puts uh, mound one down, down here, very nicely into the red wild um, period again for, for a, a candidate for burial. Um, but then th there's some of the other then dates, you know, Mound 14 is dated a little bit later, 630 to 650. Then, then we've got some other little burials which seem to have been just interspersed amongst the burial mounds. Uh, they're smaller burials. Uh, and again, these are all early 8th century. And if, if you look closely on this, I'm going to find my cursor. If you look closely on, on this drawing around Mound 5, you see these little black shapes? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, all these little black shapes are bodies. Oh, this is where now, the executions it, are supposed to have been. Yeah, the, these, these are the bodies where, uh, which are all been decapitated or mut mutilated. And they're also the ones where they found, if you remember, the sand body outlines. When they were digging them, they didn't find actual bodies and skeletons. They just found it's a bit like um, uh, you know, so Pompeii, where they where they, where you found an impression there. They made castor molds of them so that they, they then got a castor uh, castor mold um, of a of a the of the outline of a body, but it's not actually yeah, similar, a body. It's, it's, it's similar, just yeah, um, similar to what uh, they did with the ship, yeah. yeah. Uh, and a, a lot of them, when they found them, just completely disintegrated but but they've, they've, they've got a couple of um uh plaster casts of it which you can again you can see at the Sutton Hume Museum um but what's interesting to me is, is the dated you know they're saying mound one and mound two uh, uh, uh of a of the similar date in this 590 to 60 you know it's, it's a 40 year period um and the the one that's important to me if I can find my the cursor disappears all the time here. Yeah, here that's funny yeah. does that. Is yeah. this one here, Mound 17? Yes. Now, Mound 17 is a very interesting burial. It was it's a mound, but but when they took the, the dug into the mound, what they found was actually two uh, two um, holes in the ground, and in one hole there's a the remains of a horse. And in the other hole, uh, hole there's the remains of a twenty. Yeah, they, they think somewhere around about twenty five year old person who has been dubbed in the inverted commas the prince so we have a, a burial mound there which it, which you know according to the mainstream now and if you go to Sutton Hill it will be referred to as the prince and his horse okay. 
Now, what's interesting, again, look at this dating that Martin Car Carver has produced, is that Mound 17 was in the same period of time as the Mound 1 and the Mound 2 burials. And we know in Mound 1, no body was found because it was eaten away. So what's going on here when we come to Mound 17 and we have a complete skeleton of a horse? Whoa, this is it. This is getting a little bit. Yeah, um, why isn't that disintegrated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, 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 why hasn't this rotted away? You know, why is it? Why isn't this a, um, you know, just a, an outline in in the in the soil? Why isn't why isn't this at most, you know, uh, just a, um, an outline of, of the horse's body in in the soil, which they could take a plaster cast of? No, they've actually got a skeleton, and it looks almost entirely intact to me i can't i can't see any really big missing bits so it's in good condition really doesn't it? it's very recognizable the bone structure but then you go on to the the next hole and what have we got there oh we got the prince skeleton. the prince now so can i just say sorry to if you just can you just jump back quickly to the picture of the mounds because i noticed there seem to be two people buried is that there's a blue one no overlap in the pink one are you going to come on to that? Yeah, see. yeah, no, that, that, that's that's a later one. That, that, that's how they know that that burial, that blue one there, overlapping it. They know, that's how they know it's a later burial, and they're ascribing that to the early seventh century, i.e., you know, sometime in the in the early seven hundreds. Right. And the reason that, that they're doing that is, is stratification. That was cut into the that burial was cut into right. the man. You can see so the man was there first. Yeah. Therefore, it, it can't have come. You know, the man wasn't put on top of the, the, the mm. blue burial. It was a reverse way the around. One, the blue one, you got the little flame showing. Does that mean it's just a cremation found, is it? Or? Yeah, cremation. Uh, cremation. So there's no skeleton in that one? No. Yeah. Yeah. No. The skeleton's in the older mound. Yeah. yeah. In, in, mo in most of the mounds, you know, you, you've got seven, um, three, and all, all of these. Most of them were cremations, apart from mound one and mound two. Mm. Sorry, yeah, everyone, I'll just... Uh, we are definitely talking about the body next to the horse. Okay, right. Yeah. So it, uh, that, that, that's that's an interesting one, and it, get, it get, keeps coming back down to, well, hang on a minute, what is going on here? I mean, if you go back again to the man, look how close Mound Seventeen is to, to Mound One. I mean, it's not a million miles away. It, is is there something about the soil in Mound One which is so different from Mound Seventeen? Well, look at the key on the bottom. It's about thirty meters. That's all. Yeah, it's, you know, it, I, I can't reconcile this at all, that the well, body in Mound 1 has, has, has disappeared entirely. Now, you know, you start thinking, okay, this body in here, you can see the outline of a coffin. So was, has this body been protected from the ravages of the soil by the coffin? Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Uh, well, I, 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 yeah, at first glance, yeah, well, there might, be, there might be some mileage in that. But then think again, the body in Mound 1, if there was ever a body in Mound 1, was placed inside a large cabin. Mm -hmm. So the soil was not, uh, and, until that cabin rotted and collapsed, which would have taken, you know, you know, a, you know a, a long period of time, the, the, the body was not in contact with the soil anyway. So... Mm. Um, there's something odd about this which I can't reconcile, and uh, and, and there's something that's saying uh, this this can't happen. This is not some right. Questions, yeah, yeah. There, there's a question. Yeah, you know, some other things with other objects. I mean, most noticeably the, the ivory pieces yeah. and things like that, isn't it? Seems to be some inconsistencies. No, it, it's inconsistent. And and I would say if you if you draw like a a, a graph saying right, put body in the ground. Uh, but body completely dissolved. It, 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 you know, it, it won't be a straight line. So I'm sure natural processes wouldn't work like that. But you can imagine the scenario: your know, whole body, uh, zero body, you know, straight line. How many years to do it? Yep. Well, somewhere along the line, you know, this body is 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 disappearing because he's he's not all there for certain. This yes. part's yeah, it started to disintegrate, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it, it appears to be partly decayed. Uh, so can't you actually then sort of make some kind of projection or, or extrapolation from that? And say, well, well that was he's, yeah, yeah. he's 50 percent, 60 percent decayed, you know, so it would take another X hundred years or something like that. Or, or all of a sudden you, you're pushing around one burial back by a number of years. No well, percent yeah, this is, this, yeah, that's the idea I was thinking about earlier, wasn't it? With um, If this is 
sixth century, that's roughly 1,500 years. And if it's if you can say that's semi-decayed, do you have to double that then and add another 1,500 years? And that's when you get near to our magical date of 1100 BC, well, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> um, but it's no idea, isn't it? It seems as logical as anything else on this. Well, it, it, the, 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 there's, a, yeah, there's a, an anomaly here which needs to be explained. Someone needs to be able to tell us you know, how this one body 30 metres away from another is, is relatively almost wholly intact. Mm. Uh, and the man one guy is not slow by his complete absence. <laughs> it's just a little bit of phosphate in the ground, you know, which, which you know, implies that everything, his bones, his teeth, everything had disappeared. Your which teeth is, are a big one, aren't they? Because teeth would you would yeah. think would take a long time to uh, just erode. Which, which isn't the case with this one. Yeah. No. Uh, now, um, yeah. Again, yeah, it's coming back down to the timelines. They're saying the, these burials are within forty years of one another. Well, here, yeah. what kind of a graph have we got? Where it goes down, then you get to the last forty years, and all of a sudden the graph <laughs> goes off the scale as, it, yeah. as decay happens in forty years. It yes, decay rate is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just drops off the edge of a cliff. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't believe that that happens naturally. Uh, and, and, I, and there's something here which needs to be explained and looked at uh, and, and some kind of rational scientific explanation given for it because you, you can't have, this is an anomalous situation, if you're saying that these guys were buried within 40 years of one another, come on, explain that. I, 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 I don't, in the states, yeah. Yeah, I don't see any explanations um, in, in, in the publications I've seen so far. So, so that's one interesting link then between um, man 17 and man 1. Um, one of the other links is between the boat in man 1 and the boat in man 2, boat 1 and boat 2. Yes. Um, in in um, the, the big boat, uh, they, they found decorative um, uh, drinking horns. And, not, uh, and, uh, and again, I can't find out whether the horn had actually decayed or not, or, or whether there was just the, the silver fittings that fitted around the horn. They're mentioning things being found, and well, well, where are they? What happened to them? Uh, and they're, all, they're always like a little aside. Oh, yeah, we found this. And then, oh, okay, I'd like to see more details of that. And then you start trying to find it, and you find it's incredibly difficult to get you know, good quality photographs or, or any, any documentation on it. Now, what we have on the left hand side, this uh, triangular pointed thing is, is a silver ornament that fitted on the bottom of a sharp end of a horn, if you can imagine that. Uh, and what, what's happened here then in, in, this was dug out of, the large part was dug out of Man 1, which mm -hmm. is the, the big Southern Hole ship burial. And the fragments, the darker areas, I'll find my cursor again. It's gone, my cursor goes walk about here, doesn't it? It's gone. Oh, here we are. The darker areas here, you know, which are darker on here and just a little bit down the bottom. Yeah, the middle and the uh, bottom, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're fragments taken uh, from a horn decoration found in, in, in uh, Basel, found in the first boat burial, which is in Mound 2. Now, when they've overlaid them, they find out, as you can see here, that they're almost an exact match. And Rupert Mitford Bruce, oh, sorry, it's Bruce Mitford, I got that wrong way around, isn't it? it's Rupert Bruce Mitford. Um, he claims that they're actually so identical that they come from an identical dive, which infers that the same person made both of them. Or they were made at the same time, yeah. Yeah, or they were made, well, they, uh, yes, well, well, in, yeah, he, 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 I think he actually claims that they were made by the same person. Because, yeah, I don't know how he could possibly know that. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, if, it's, if it's my dye, it's my dye. You know? oh, I but say, I can't dip my brush in. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, you know, it, it's that kind of thing. So, but, but anyway, we, we certainly infer that they were made in the same workshop. Yes, I would think that's a better way yeah, of putting it. That's, uh, that, that's that probably a better way of putting it. They were, they were made in the same workshop. Uh, and and that would also infer that they were made at the same around about the same moment in time, which then would tie in with the dates that Martin Carver is giving for the range of man one and two man burials, the forty years. Yeah, because because one of the things that sticks out on me because it's um, it's a question we've been hinting at in previous videos, and we talked about when the camera's not running, is this tracing the ivory? How much ivory have they actually got? Like on this one, they, they they've declared this the first time i've seen this but they've declared this as being um auroch horn yeah 
Well, that implies they must have done some analysis of the ivory, which implies they must have some of it left over. Because what I'd be very keen to do is on, for example, the flap of the purse or the claimed handle of the sword, mm -hmm. if they do have ivory, they only need a tiny, tiny amount then to locate and say which kind of animal uh, it was and where in the world it might have come from. No, no exactly. If, if, if they can find out what where, where this horn is coming from, what kind of animal it is, mm. it, it, it could point to an area. And, and I'm sure nowadays it's not beyond the realms of possibility that it, horn is like teeth. If you did an yeah. analysis on it, you could probably show what the auric was having for breakfast and where, yes. he, where he was eating it as a result of that. We could, we could do our RDA stuff and everything, but I know when I was looking at the research on uh, slightly different, on punt and, uh, you know, sort of the Horn of Africa, well, they found some of the trade goods in Egypt, in the, the harbour there, and from just a couple of hairs, they claimed to be able to locate which part of Ethiopia or, yeah. or Somalia that the baboons mm. lived in. They could, they could reduce it to a region just from a few hairs. Yeah. So if they do have ivory, I'm sure they could... Uh, I mean, that might be fascinating to find out where, where, what animals and where they come from. But this this is this is an oric? For, I mean, when did yeah. oryx die out? I mean, what, what do they mean by an oric? There's some weird stuff going on here. Now, it, 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 as I say, you keep on reading all this stuff and you keep on coming across these little, you know, by the wayside. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, 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 you know, they, they always seem to lead in a dead end. You know, no one's thinking any further. And, and you can't help but think that there's all this stuff is stolen in these boxes mm. in, in a bit like the uh, warehouse at the end of the Indiana Jones film. Yes, you know, yes. all stacked up there, just yeah, waiting for the yeah. up on and, and pull it out and then say, oh, oh God, look at this. I didn't know we had this. Let's go and test this, and we come up with some exciting discovery. So, I mean, that wouldn't yeah. even be expensive or anything. You just take a, a tiny sample of the ivory and send it off. You know, it's it's not big money for that kind of thing. I, it's, it's probably less than the cost of one river, to put it that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, nowadays with so many uh, lamps doing this work, it, yeah. it, you know, it, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be costly, and it, and. and it, should be done in a very quick time scale. They could turn these things around now within, you know, so within a couple of weeks at most. Definitely less than 80 years anyway. Ah, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed that and found it informative. Britain's Hidden History Group has so much more going on on our YouTube channel. When you're watching now, there's a live stream, 8 o'clock UK time every Sunday. We speak to people like Wilson and Blackett, reprint their old books and help produce new ones. We go researching to the tops of mountains all the way down to the bottoms of caves busily recording the books you can listen to them as well and looking at mysteries and working out what we're not being taught in schools and preserving it because the physical and written evidence is rapidly disappearing you can also find out how to read ancient writing and hieroglyphs using the welsh language it's amazing it's a facebook group where this is being discussed along with a website you can buy the books and help us also as you can see there's now a patreon page where just a few pounds a month will make all the difference in trying to keep the project going and preserve this history for future generations and also to find out for ourselves what is going on what is britain's hidden history so until the next time hevuch